Hi, this is Gary with Mac Most Now. On today's episode, let me show you how to change the tempo of a single track in GarageBand. So you can search all over the internet for how to change the tempo of a single track in GarageBand and come up with the answer that it can't be done. Most of those sites don't bother to explain why you can't do that, at least not easily. And of course there is a workaround. Let me show you. So here I've got a pretty simple set of two loops in GarageBand. That's what it sounds like. And suppose I want to increase the tempo of this drum track here without increasing the tempo of the electric guitar track. So doubling the speed of this, keeping the speed of this the same. Well, it doesn't seem like you can do that. If you go to this one track here and simply go down to the bottom, I have projects selected down here. I can increase the tempo, double it, and it will double the tempo for the entire thing. Now, if I want to increase just the one track, it doesn't matter how I select it or what I do to select which one, it's going to increase the tempo of the entire project, which isn't what I want. So first let's take a look at why this is happening. It's pretty easy to find out. If you go down here and you look at the track editor, you can see that if I have a track selected, it has follow tempo and pitch turned on. Both of these tracks have follow tempo and pitch. Now this is a fundamental part of GarageBand because you have all these loops here on the right and they're actually all recorded at different tempo and pitches. And when you bring them into a single project it matches them together. That's how you can use all of these different loops together. Otherwise you'd only be able to use loops of a certain tempo and pitch with other loops of the same. So if I were to select this one here and turn that off, you can see what happens. That track actually is shorter in one measure. It's actually a lot slower. This is what it really sounds like if I solo it. A little faster if I turn on follow tempo and pitch. That is matching to the 120 beats that the track is set to. So because I'm using follow tempo and pitch for all the tracks, of course if I adjust the tempo, it adjusts them for everything. So I want to get away from follow tempo and pitch in order to adjust a track. If I turn it off of course then it's not going to match. But if I leave it on and then go to edit, add to loop library, I get to basically make a copy of that loop. And this could be something I've recorded uh, so it doesn't have to be something from the actual uh, loops there. And I'm going to just do a test one and going to create it. And that's going to create a new loop now it won't actually even be there. I'm going to search for it here in the loop browser uh, and just search for it by the name that I gave it, test. And there it is. And I'm going to bring that in and you can see that it's identical to this one. Matter of fact, if I were to solo both those tracks, I'd just get double that. They're both the same. The difference is, is that if I select this one and I say don't follow tempo and pitch, you can see it doesn't change because its default tempo and pitch is the 120 beats down here, whereas the default for here is the original recording. Now I can delete that track and I have this track here, the guitar track, set to be uh, follow tempo and pitch. So it's going to change speeds and this one here to be the default for its track. It's not going to follow tempo and pitch. It doesn't matter if I select that because they both are 120 beats per minute. So now what I can do is I can change the tempo of the entire thing and I could double it. And what will happen is because I doubled that and this is not following tempo and pitch, it actually slows down this track. It stretches it out over twice the amount of time. So when I play back, What's happened is I've doubled the tempo of this one because it's following tempo and pitch, but I have not doubled the tempo of this one at all. It's remained the same because it's not following tempo and pitch. In effect, I've sped that one up twice. I've kept that one the same. So it's kind of counterintuitive because what you're doing is you're taking the tracks where the speed is exactly what you want and you're duplicating them as a new loop and then you're turning off follow tempo and pitch. So those are kind of like locked in to that speed. Then the remaining track or tracks where you want the speed to adjust, those are still set to follow tempo and pitch and you can adjust 
your tr your entire song is necessary to speed up or slow down those while the other ones are held steady. Of course the other solution to this that you may see elsewhere is to isolate the parts that you want to speed up in a single garage band uh, project and then speed them up, get them the perfect speed, export them, and then bring them back in as an audio file. You do the same thing using another sound program like say Audacity. Go and change the tempo of them as a separate audio file and bring them in. Uh, I think this is a little bit easier and still leaves everything open and editable in some way. So there are some options for you. Hope you found this useful. Till next time, this is Gary with MacMost Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the Videos link at the top of the page, and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.